I'm pleased to present Biocon's Q3 FY25 earnings. And I would like to comment on the group's financial performance uh, as follows. I do believe that the third quarter of this fiscal was in line with our expectations, signaling a return to growth and reinforcing our confidence in continued growth for the rest of this fiscal year and beyond. Consolidated operating revenues at rupees 3,821 crores reflected year-on-year -year growth of 10% on a like-for-like -like basis. The biosimilars business maintained its good growth momentum, reporting a 14% year-on-year increase in revenue on a like-for-like -like basis and a 5% sequential growth. This was driven by improved market share in North America, demonstrating strong customer confidence. We also saw geographic expansion in Europe, as well as 14 launches in emerging markets. Sinjin also saw a return to growth across all business divisions, with operating revenue increasing 11% year on year and a 6% sequential growth. Generics reported a 10% sequential growth, primarily driven by API sales and supported by an improved performance from generic formulations, but on a year-on-year -year basis, it declined 2%. The growth trajectory is clearly visible with sequential growth across all the three business segments this quarter. Now coming to consolidated financial performance, I want to remind you that Q3 FY25 financials need to be viewed on a like-for-like -like basis. And why do I say this? Because there were some one-offs in Q3 FY24 that needs to be factored. This particularly featured uh, revenues from branded formulations or the BFI business, which obviously are not reflected in Q3 FY25 as we divested this business last fiscal. There was also an income of 350 crores from the part, divest, part divestment of the BFI business by Biocon Biologics. And so, uh, there was also another gain of 456 crores from Biocon stake dilution in Bicara Therapeutics. So if one were to adjust Q3 FY24 revenues for the above and make a like-for-like -like comparison of the two quarters, then total revenue grew 7% year-on-year to 3,856 crores. Core EBITDA rose 4% year-on-year to 1,007 crores with core operating margins of 26%. EBITDA increased 16% year-on-year to 787 crores with an EBITDA margin of 20%. Our bottom line improved significantly from the marginal loss that we suffered last year to a PBT of 138 crores this fiscal. Reported net profit for the quarter was 25 crores this fiscal, and adjusting for exceptional items, net profit stood at 13 crores. When comparing profit numbers, we should remember that last year's figures therefore benefited from the Baikara gain and the income from part divestment of the BFI business. We continue to invest in R&D with net R&D spending at Rs. 199 crores, representing 7% of revenues ex -CG. Now coming to highlights, let's start with biosimilars. Biosimilar revenue was 2,289 crores which is up 14% on a like-for-like -like basis. EBITDA was at rupees 487 crores, 
including a non-cash forex translational translational loss of uh, rupees 20 crores and excluding the forex impact ebitda margin for the quarter was 22% ebitda grew 44% therefore on a year on year like for like basis we continue to invest in our pipeline to drive mid and long term growth with rd investments at 6% of revenue in this quarter when it comes to business performance Biocon Biologics continued to consolidate and strengthen its vertically integrated model. We delivered a strong performance across our product portfolio, especially in the United States, with market shares of over 20% for the oncology portfolio, which included biosimilar trastuzumab and biosimilar pegfilgrastin, and mid to high teens for the Glargy franchise across all channels. Market shares in Europe remain stable with a strong performance in key markets such as Germany and France, where we hold double-digit shares for products such as biosimilar adenivumab or Julio. We expanded the depth and breadth of our offerings for patients in emerging markets with eight approvals and 14 new launches across key geographies. When it comes to regulatory developments, the US FDA classified our manufacturing facilities both in India and Malaysia as BAI, thereby paving the way for new product approvals in the US. Yesentech, which is our biosimilar Ustelkinumab, which is reference to Stellara, received regulatory approvals in US and Japan, as well as a positive CHMP opinion in EU. We are preparing for a February 2025 launch of Yesentech in the US. Now, when it comes to our reconfigured balance sheet post the acquisition, this quarter marked the completion of one year since the successful integration of the acquired business. Our balance sheet is reconfigured and our financials for this quarter reflects a revised debt maturity profile after the completion of the strategic refinancing. Coming to generics, operating revenue for the generics business was at rupees 686 crores, which grew a healthy 10% on a sequential basis, but a decline of 2% year on year. We crossed an important milestone in the quarter with the European Union DCP approval for Viragutai. This approval positions Biocon for strategic growth in the region as we prepare to commercialize the product in FY26. We also received approval for Tacrolimus capsules in China, marking uh, the second important drug product approval for Biocon in this strategically important market. Another highlight in the quarter was the successful regulatory outcome of the US FDA inspections of both our Bengaluru API sites. When it comes to research services, Sinji's performance for the third quarter built upon its Q2 performance with operating revenue coming in at 944 crores, which is up 11% year on year. Discovery services contributed to growth during the quarter with continued collaborations with many large and mid-sized pharma companies on pilot projects. And the initial China plus one pilots start, are starting to convert to longer term contracts during the quarter thus providing visibility for growth for the next fiscal. These conversions demonstrate Sinji's scientific capabilities and high operating and quality standards. The performance of development and manufacturing service was steady, driven by biologics with repeat orders from existing customers, and also <clears throat> to, through new collaborations on integrated projects. So let me talk about outlook for these three business segments. 
the strengthening of operational building blocks has improved growth visibly visibility across all three businesses, reinforcing our confidence in continued growth for the rest of this fiscal and beyond. The regulatory, operational and financial developments across the three businesses support our short, medium and longer term growth objectives. When it comes to generics, we expect performance in the fourth quarter and beyond to build up uh, upon the sequential revenue growth in Q3 driven by new launches across markets, including the launch of our generic GLP-1 uh, liraglutide in the UK and the EU, as well as new product launches in the United States. As far as biosimilars is concerned, this business now has a clear line of sight for multiple new product launches beginning in Q4-25, having received regulatory approvals for our biosimilar Ustekilumab, Yesintik in US and Japan, as well as successfully securing BAI classifications for all our manufacturing units from the US FDA. Biocon Biologics is now focused on leveraging its vertically integrated model and global footprint for launch planning and commercial excellence. Our priority will be to ensure that we bring our new products expeditiously to the market to provide patients with access to affordable treatment options. These new launches will serve as key growth catalysts for both revenue and margins. Syngene's return to growth when it comes to research services this quarter reflects improved market dynamics, particularly with, within the US biotech sector, which is seen as stabilizing. The research services business is on the right trajectory for the rest of this fiscal. So in conclusion, global approvals for biosimilar ustekinumab and European approval of generic liraglutide paved the way for launches combined with Syngene's growth rebound have strategically positioned the Biocon group for enhanced growth in Q4 and beyond. Thank you very much.